first of them, Chuff and Danny Laff. I think he's been outstanding since he's come to the football club. I'm a firm believer in hard work, puts you in a place where good luck will find you. And the lads have been working hard, you know, so maybe we deserved it. Really happy, Tim. And, you know, that doesn't mean we've turned the corner. It just means that we've put Gainsborough uh, to bed. And now, you know, it's a nice double, league double. And now we can focus on, you know, Radcliffe coming to Broadhurst Park on Tuesday night. It was a well, well deserved victory. Yeah, Tim, you know, you've got to credit the lads. The lads have been magnificent. You know, we, we've just lost back to back games, you know, 3 0, 3 0. We're coming at half time, it's another nil. And confidence levels are they're affected. But I don't lose belief in them. I know that we have got goal scorers on the pitch. I know we've got lads out there to keep clean sheets. I know we've got a lot of running, a lot of legs, a lot of energy. And, you know, when we needed the crowd, you know, they went up, they could they could sniff it today. And, you know, we got the first through Buckley and the second through Jan and, you know, saw it home quite comfortably. Yeah, I mean, the first half, I mean, we, we sort of reflected on it. Um, like basically both sides of the shot each on target and the shot each off target. It was quite cagey. It sort of reflected probably that both teams sort of like mental sort of like stake in terms of just keeping it tight, not trying to be too ambitious and also not conceding. Um, what did you say at, at half time? I just said to the lads that, you know, we, we were playing within ourselves and I understand why. We didn't want to go 1 0 down. We didn't want to concede. We didn't want to have that uphill struggle. And psychologically, it's affected us when we considered the goals at Mount Lock and considered the goals the way we did at Marine. But I knew if we could get our tails in front, that we would. And what I had today is a, there's a number of game changers on the bench that I knew that if we could get to a certain point in the game, you know, they could come on and, and change it. And, and that's exactly what they did. And that's why. You know, this season we've been crying out for a squad and, you know, injuries and suspensions or, you know, loss of form hasn't been able to do that. But when I can spin round and look at the likes of Bennett, who was outstanding when he come on, and, and Gilboy and Charlie Munro, you know, his National League North player last season, it's, it gives you a, a lot of confidence. And, you know, for me, I haven't lost any confidence in that group. You know, people people will rightly, you know, criticise at times when we don't win. But there's a lot of football management and sometimes it's not just about picking a side and doing the tactics about the work that you do outside of that. And, you know, there's been a lot of time we've spent this week on the phone one to one uh, as a squad in training on our little Zoom meetings, our teams meetings to, to, to get through and, and get that performance today. So, you know, delighted, really happy, Tim. And, you know, that doesn't mean we've turned the corner. It just means that we've put Gainsborough uh, to bed. And now, you know, it's a nice double league double. And now we can focus on, you know, Radcliffe coming to Broadhurst Park on Tuesday night. Obviously, the most noticeable thing about the starting lineup, you know, apart from the debutants, um, was the shape you were starting with three at the back. Was that calling ship six in two games? It's, no, not really. It's our second formation. You know, we've lost two of the best centre halves in the league in Yad and Curtis Jones. I mean, what the hell do people think at times, you know, when we're, we're kind of up against it and we've lost two of the best centre halves in the league? And you look at Jan, Jan's played back to back games. He's a, he's a monster, he's an absolute immense. And we're better when he plays. We're better when Curtis Jones plays. We're better than when we've got Charlie Oliver and, and Danny Lafferty. You know, we, we've got we've got a really good squad. We just can't get him out. So the idea of having Yam back today, getting Lafferty back central, which I thought Laff was outstanding. Uh, Charlie uh, Oliver to the right, Yam to the left. Really good shape. It allowed Deck and Guy to go higher. Uh, and then we had a pivot of Charlie Anderson Griffin there. And, you know, like you said, we, we threw uh, Everton to young, young, uh, young Bob today. He did well, he deserved his chance. And then it allowed us to stretch play at the top end with with uh, Trevon and, and Jordan. But, you know, special mention, uh, before I mention George, is to Pat. Pat's been excellent this season for us. But, you know, unfortunately for a goalkeeper, when you when you can see goals and you have a bit of a dip, all the pressure's on you. Or this only think it is. I, I take all the pressure. But it's nice for Pat just to come out. You know, he's been outstanding this season as Pat. He's got a big role to play for the football club. But George coming in today, didn't know anybody, wanted to, wanted to impress. Delighted with his kicking and his and his handling, uh, so you know he, he gave us that platform and, and allowed us to get high up the park. So you know hopefully he can learn from Pat, Pat can learn from him. Uh, if we decide to go three again, we, we've got that basis. If we want to go two, we've got that basis. So it just listen, we just want players back. You know when, when we get Jan back, the way our season's going, we we'll lose Donahue maybe for the season with a with a slight fracture on his ankle. Waiting on Curtis Jones, it's just one thing after another. It's hard work, but. You know, we're not going to be moaning. We're going to enjoy this one tonight, and we have to enjoy it and, and then get ready for Radcliffe Tuesday. Yeah, you mentioned Danny. He was the uh, Joseph Holtz man of the match. Oh. Joseph Myers here in radio. Um, you know, an outstanding performance, uh, not only at the back, a clean sheet. He's obviously a top of project to be a central defender. He two assists again. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm, to first thing, I'm chuffing Danny Laff. I think he's been outstanding since he's come to the football club. Lovely lad. Wears his heart on his sleeves. Exactly what he says he is on the tin. Born leader, natural winner. Uh, 
And I went after him at half time today. He'll probably tell you. I went for him. I said he was playing too deep. We need to get him higher. We need to get our wing backs higher. You know what? He can take it. He just loves it. He, he looks at you, white, but white in the eyes. He, he eyeballs you and goes, Yeah, I'll do that. And second half, the way he stepped into play, some of his diagonal balls were exquisite, aerially in both boxes. But like I said, the assists, you know, so we might play him as number nine on Tuesday. Who knows? You know, Tim, when he's got that in him. But listen, I, I'm really happy that Danny Lass got what man at match. He's, he's been everything that every manager has told me he would be, uh, which is first and foremost a, an outstanding man. You know, that's that's the you know his, his word is absolutely everything. And secondly, an unbelievable player. And you know, if we if we can get players around him as well, and, and he can play in that central one, then then he's going to be as good as anything. Yeah, and you know, just touching on um, some of the debutants, obviously, so George and Goal, uh, you know. Didn't have a huge amount to do in the first half, but basically, some, you know, there was a quite a tricky back pass to him that probably he wanted to want it. Um, and then obviously, there was that sort of catch on the line that kind yeah. of looped over his head. I was impressed, he came forward in the first half and kind of palmed it up and then caught it in the second attempt. Brave to come for it, great talker, you know, kicking. I just said, you know, how did you find that? He said, it's a bit like South End where he came from, you know, with the pitch, etc. So, he had to deal with it, well, that's why he's here, you know, you're not always going to have. The Etihad or the training facilities, he's, he's coming here to learn his trade and, and it's difficult in both goals. You know, we know that we've got our problems with the drains, but he adapted and he adapted really well. So, they like with George, uh, but there's going to be games for both of them to play. You know, the Phoenix Trophy's coming up. You know, we're hopeful that the, uh, the, the Pat will still get minutes. And then Bob Jammer, you know, Bob came in and he's trained with the squad for four weeks and I said, I, I, I don't care who I, who I put in the side. I put in whoever I want to put in the side and Bob Jammer deserves to go in today. And, you know, when he came off, he was shattered. He didn't realise how quick the tempo was. You know, he, he, he kind of, he feels that he didn't do a great deal. I was delighted for him because he's got his opportunity and fully deserves it. And with him, you know, the likes of Dom Doyle and the young Elliot will be training with us. You've got to credit Chris Taylor and Tom Conroy. They're turning out a really good side in, in what they're doing with the academy. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep that relationship. And if they say they're doing well, then, then we bring them in. But, you know, that's a marker today. It's not a marker for any other reason. The marker is a Bob Jammer deserves to start. And he was knackered at half time. He really was tired. And we said to go out two or three minutes and, you know, we could turn around and bring Bennett on. Uh, and Bennett gave us that quality, you know, that, that maybe we were missing. Uh, and we went and won the game. But, but like I said, you know, delighted that, that, we can, that we can show that connection between the academy and the first team. Yeah, I mean, I think it was like, obviously, the goal instilled confidence. Obviously, it came at a good time in the game. Um, I think it's probably the first time <clears throat> for me. I think I've seen in a few games where we actually just you could see the starting to go through the gears and their goalkeeper. You know, I would have said he was there picking players. So he had a very good game and, and <clears throat> saved about three or four on the goal line. You thought he probably didn't have the right to do. He made an outstanding save off George, didn't he? Just before George scored, and George's got to bury that for me. He probably knows that. And then, but come with the outcome of the man, he steps up, he weaves inside two and, and pops it in the bottom corner. And listen, that caps off his, his performance. I've been critical of Jordan the last few weeks, not maybe not working as hard enough as what we think he can, but he's always coming back from injury. Today, he left everything out on the pitch and, and he led the line superbly well. I don't think he got a lot of decisions right from a ref. I think, you know, when you're a big centre forward, some things go against you. Uh, but he led the line superbly well. He got his goal and, and that was good. And, and then we wanted the second to, we desperately wanted the second. Like I said, the keeper was in fine form. And then we got it through Big Yam, who five minutes prior to that wanted to come off. He was he had nothing left in him, but he got his goal and then and then, then it was one way traffic and then we could have scored maybe four or five. You know, we can tell with the, the noise around the stadium. Yeah, I mean the referee uh, for me probably had a very decent game on the whole, I think. Uh, the one probably the contentious decision I thought was potentially the penalty where basically was Trevor Brown went down in Yeah, the maybe. Yeah, uh, you know, I've got to I've got to support that. I said to the, the, the three officials before he went out, I like the referee. He's always good. He's always a good talker. So he won't get any trouble from us. I thought they were excellent. The way he manages the game, talks in the right way. He's not arrogant the way he talks. He's he's not kind of although he's in charge. He doesn't come across that way. So they were superb. You know, they probably don't they don't get enough uh, plaudits or credit. You know, when they do have good games, and it's easy to say they've had a good game when you've won. But I'm sure that their bench would say the same thing. He had a really good game, and and if he got the Trevor on one wrong, I'd have to watch it back. He, he got it wrong, but he was in line of play. So he's got a decision to make, and but we said you won't hear anything from us, and you know we're we're on the whole, you know, as a technical area, we're, we're very well behaved. We have our blips, you know, but sometimes the blips come when decisions may go against you. And I, I can't say too much about that, but I think when you when you got an official or officials that, that manage the game the way they do it, it makes it a lot easier for you. And not obviously rolling into two big old games. Also, we've got Radcliffe here on Tuesday, and then we'll wait for Whitney next week. Um, big challenges in their own ways. Listen, Radcliffe are top of the league for a reason because they're the best team in the league. 
and they've got beat today and, and Burn and John won't be happy about that. They'll come here, they'll want to put it right. I don't think they've lost two games all season back to back. So, you know, because they've lost today it doesn't mean anything. They'll, they'll come here, guns blazing, you know, they'll be fired up and they'll wanna they'll wanna beat us. But we've got to take a vast amount of confidence from the, the trophy game that we played. I mean, we've got to take a lot of confidence from today's performance. But also one eye knowing that, you know, if we switch off the way we did against Marine or not underperform against Matlock, then they're gonna put two or three past you. We've just got to we've got to dust ourselves down, we've got to get ready. We we'll always respect opposition and you know, massive well done to what Bernard and John have done. I have no doubt they'll get over the line this season, but they won't always have it their own way and they know that. But they'll come here on Tuesday and, and they'll want to put the wrongs right. For us, we haven't turned the corner, Tim. We've just got three points today and I'm delighted with that. And we're going to have a drink and we're going to enjoy it, you know, because it, it's, it's not a good feeling when you don't. So I'm going to go in there, I'm, I'm going to carry on putting my fingers in my ears and, and kind of ignoring the noise. And, and that group just, just, need, just need me and we need each other at the minute. And we've got to. We've just got to get through it together because I'll say it all season, they're, they're a brilliant group and all we're doing is adding more quality to it. But the vast amount of them have been here all season. So, yeah, you know, well, enjoy today, Tim. You know, massive thanks to, to all the support. I've got to say this. The game finished, Tim, and I walked around the stadium and I must have bumped into, I don't know how many hundreds of people who said, congratulations on the deal. Well done, we're right behind you. And that, to me, it's, that means so much. You know, it means so much. And I don't want to talk about things outside of here but it means so much to me and you know I'm, I haven't had a chance to say I'm delighted I'm signed the deal you know I'll carry on working I might not always be you know everyone's cup of tea which is fine but I'll keep working but, but that support to me you know I try to instill confidence into some people that gives me confidence as well so you know thank you to them people today and you know let's let's just move forward yeah I mean one of the things that we've probably touched on here so a couple of players signed long term contracts with us you know, and obviously they want confidence that you know, basically you're going to be there yeah. to, to, to keep them yeah. in the rooms and club. Yeah. Um, you know, so basically it, it all works it's, together. It, Tim, it's hard to say, you know, and, and, and sometimes people just look at the result, but, you know, them lads, I'll say love playing for me, you know, absolutely, and, and we get on really well, and that's why they've committed, and that's why they want to be here, and that's why, you know, other clubs want the players to come here, i.e. Man City. You know, I get on with a lot of people outside of football. I might upset a handful of people because we don't win but you know we're right behind each other in there and we'll carry on doing it and listen I've said it before you're there to be shot as a manager it happens you know but let's just, just enjoy the win tonight and uh, let's go ref Tuesday OK I'm going to be cheeky basically obviously a bit of an eye opener so we'll only a player from the City obviously uh, very mm-hmm. close neighbours yeah some of them might say noisy neighbours um, <clears throat> Do you think we'll see more, in play, more players coming down maybe the we've just got outstanding links with, with football clubs and, and people trust me People trust me in football and, and that's what it comes down to, to, you know, and and they want the players to come here because we know that we'll look after them. And when you've got a facility that we've got at FC United, if they come from Blackburn or they come from Bolton or they come from Crewe or they come from Man City, you know, there's, there's players out there and if they trust me and they trust us, then, then we'll carry on trying to develop them. But, you know, massive thanks to City, you know, to get that over the line, it, it gives us that quality. But but you see, Tim, you know, but I'm not a bad person. You know, we get with a lot of people outside of football and... Uh, and, and as long as I've got that relationship and that rapport, then, then I'm happy with doing what I'm doing. OK, well, congratulations. Great win. Uh, sets up nicely for the coming week. Uh, go on, enjoy, enjoy. Brilliant. Cheers, Tim. Thank you. Congratulations, Danny. You're the Josie Folks Man of the Match, as selected by SVM Radio. After a very cagey first half, uh, we came into it in second, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Like, say, first, first probably 10, 15, 20 minutes were a little bit cagey. Played a new system today, you know, and we were probably, it felt like we were kind of just trying to get used to that. Uh, it was a little bit deep. The gaffer told me specifically I was a little bit deep for staff, so it was just about getting used to it. And <clears throat> you probably could say we rode our luck, you know, they had a few chances early doors, but I'm a firm believer in hard work, puts you in a place where good luck will find you. And the lads have been working hard, you know, so maybe we deserved it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you were probably the pick of the FC players on Tuesday and you carried that great form into today's game. Um, do you think that sort of like three at the back suits you better? Um, well, listen, whatever whatever system the gaffer has to play, we're going to play it and you know, we'll all do our best and try our hardest. Today, we've won 2-0 and we've kept a clean sheet, so that probably speaks for itself, I suppose. Hopefully, we can keep it going. Yeah, and obviously, uh, you, you, you were basically sort of like pretty fundamental in both goals as well. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. We're not listen. I'm more pleased about the clean sheet, you know, that's the biggest thing. But yeah, it's nice to help out up top as well. Yeah, I'm not too yeah. bad cross and I'm off the pitch and then I, I don't yeah. I don't I don't even know it when yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I just I just jumped up and ball went back at that. Yeah, so, no, it's quite funny yeah. you can see the pair of you just basically just literally a yard off the goal yeah, line. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Job's done, I was buzzing, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, fantastic. So um obviously 
we had a really good runner like four wins in six and then based on a couple of sort of results obviously of Matlock and Marine went against us you yeah. know uh, Marine in particular were very good yeah. um, you know basically it was a tough old game um, confidence boosting ahead of the Radcliffe game on Tuesday oh yeah and you absolutely need it you, you can tell in the change rooms it has been a little bit flat listen about like saying that because it's not what people want to hear it's been a little bit flat when you lose two games 3-0 on the bounce it's not ideal but I think it goes to show the character the mentality of the lads that from today, we had a good chat with the gaffer on Thursday night, which were inspirational for me and the rest of the lads. And it's just took us into today and 2 0 clean sheet, really can't get any better. Yeah, I mean, it's important to win, you know, especially home games. It gives everyone a bounce. Um, yeah. You know, we've been away from the broadest part for so long now. Yeah. And, you know, these three sort of like games in close succession basically it's just maximum points, isn't it? Well, that's it. And it keeps the fans on side as well. And the fans, I just want to say, the fans have been absolutely brilliant, you know. We've lost two games there, three 0 <clears throat> which is not ideal, and we shouldn't be doing it. But the fans are clapping us off the pitch. You know, it's it, it's good, it's brilliant, and that today for them. Fantastic. Well, congratulations once again, Joseph Holt, man of the match, as chosen by FC Radio. Congratulations. Really? And enjoy your evening. Thank you very much. Cheers.